Hi guys, I hope you're doing well amidst all the market volatility we are seeing in the last couple of days. Um, before I start my equity deep dive, I would like to highlight the mission of our YouTube channel. We are a no hype channel and we try to find under the radar multi baggers which are trading at reasonable prices. And in order to do that, we also leverage our Telegram chat where, where investors accumulatively discuss different alpha generating equity, crypto, DeFi, you name it. Uh, and one of the investors over there uh, highlighted this under the radar gem to us and we thought it was a very interesting story. Uh, so we thought we shared it with you. The company is called Zoomed. Uh, it, um, the ticker is ZOMD and it's currently trading at 0 0.66 uh, Canadian dollars as of now. Without further ado, we are going to do a deep dive on their overall business model. So first, in order to understand their complex business model, I will divide the business overview into st like step-by-step -step bullet points so you can easily follow and understand what they're doing and therefore also understand some of the risk associated with their business model. So first thing first, they provide free on-site search technology uh, for, for publishers. Now, if you go on, to, on, on a particular website, whether it's an e-commerce website or Google itself, you see a magnifying glass where you can type something on a bar and search for different results. So they provide a plugin to publishers uh, to do that for free within their website. And they claim that because, because of their uh, superior patented technology of, of, of the search engine, uh, they can improve the user experience both aesthetically as well as organization of information. Now, it also serves a few benefits uh, for the publishers to have their free technology on board. Firstly, if the, if the website looks aesthetically pleasing, users are going to spend more time on it and will uh, basically will have a pleasurable experience because of the interface. Secondly, uh, if the information is better organized, uh, that will also uh, save a lot of real estate in terms of ad placement. And that's th that is also one thing what uh, Zoom D claims, uh, claims to do that because of the search engine, they are able to uh, make everything combined together in such a way that you have a lot more free space. And, and finally, if users are going to spend a lot of time because of the interface, uh, that, will, that will eventually lead to more revenue uh, for, for the publishers because of the time duration of advertisement that gets targeted uh, to the, these visitors. There's a famous saying in economics that there are no free lunches, and this also holds true in this case. So when Zoom D provides publisher a free access to the on-site engine, uh, they also basically get access to their visitors. So they will only provide the service for free if the publisher gives them access to the visitors data. And that is very important because now Zoom D uh, will put a cookie on, on, on the visitors data and will be able to track that user to see what they're searching on site and will also be able to track them on external website. So let's say if somebody is interested in sports and kind of searches on a publisher's website, okay, Pakistan versus India cricket match, for instance. And ZoomD uh, has AI technology and NLP technology that basically is intelligent enough to see what this user is trying to look for and what's, what, what his intent is. And then it also tracks what this user does from other, other website. And holistically, in a, from a very macro perspective, knows what this user wants. And let's say if this user is very much interested in sports and and Zoomd has a client that wants to promote a sports betting website, or let's say a sports, sorry, sport betting website, or a sports betting app, or perhaps a sports application for for whatever for whatever purpose. Then, when a user returns uh, to a particular website, all of a sudden, randomly, he will see an ad which is targeted on sports and is targeted based on his intention and preferences. And if that user basically clicks on the ad or downloads the app or engages with the ad banner in some way, uh, ZoomD will make revenue and get the credit for it. And advertiser will also achieve their KPI in terms of uh, uh, basically having more viewership or perhaps having more download of their website or perhaps having more click throughs. So you will have appreciation that 
uh, through their tool, advertisers can penetrate different geographies, different segments of the industry, whether it's e-commerce, whether it's sports, whether it's fintech. But just to give you an appreciation of how big the industry is, uh, you can like see from the graph over here, it's uh, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, advertisers have huge budgets that they spend on advertisement themselves or basically hire an external agency uh, to kind of find channels which will uh, improve their KPIs and hence ROI in terms of their ad budget and marketing budget. So within this huge uh, industry, uh, they are a part of what I call search ads. There are different types of advertisement. Uh, you see advertisement on connective, uh, connective TV now through Roku. You have display ads, but search ad is when a user searches something and based on based on some behavioral context uh, and some based on the search result, you kind of get a targeted ad. Uh, so industry, this industry is very, very concentrated and has a lot of competition. So you also have Amazon, Google, Facebook within the sector, uh, and you also have big players with huge economies of scale in terms of agencies uh, operating within different domains of the sector. So it's a very competitive uh, sector, don't get me wrong. Uh, not only that, the digital ad spending is increasing and it has been increasing over time. But it has in, uh, it, but it has kind of like become saturated and it's just growing 8% Kager now. And also, uh, advertisement advertisers are not uh, very loyal. They they want results and all the time they're chasing ROI based on if their KPIs are achieved. So for instance, if if they feel that let's say connective TV ads or social ads uh, improve their uh, KPIs, then there is a very high probability that the budget spent on let's say on-site search. Uh, advertisement for particular apps decreases and other alternatives emerge up and because of that uh, the company can uh, can have a slowdown in revenue and we will discuss that later as well I, and it was one of the trends that also impacted uh, zoomed uh, in, in, in few ways just to give you more appreciation of where in uh, where zoom zoomed uh, stands within the industry even though it focuses on on-site uh, Advertisement, it, it focuses just on the ad markets, which apparently is uh, growing at a higher CAGR. So digital ad spending, it's growing at 8%. But if you see um, the uh, the global ad install ad, uh, it's, 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 it's basically growing at 23 to 25% CAGR uh, over, over the period of time. And it kind of makes sense that uh, since you have more mobile penetration going on globally and people installing more apps, it makes sense to kind of promote those apps. Uh, and what uh, ZoomD believes and says is that it's focused on the ad market that are not controlled by Google and Facebook. So Google, Facebook uh, control about 40% of the ad install market in terms of um, marketing marketing budget of the uh, of the big corporates, and they focus on the remaining chunk of it. So you can like kind of uh, get a appreciation that they operate in a particularly niche market, and and you have big hitters within uh, big hitters operating within this industry so you can like get a sense of how competitive it is and how fragmented it is so i hope you understood the business model and i also hope you understood the industry dynamics they operate in now in order to have a generic appreciation of whether the investment makes sense or not it's 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 a good thing to have a framework ready. So I'm just going to use a strength, weakness, opportunity threat framework to see if the investment thesis of this company makes sense. The first thing which I, I will say uh, is the strength of this company is the management. Management uh, team seems solid. So they have a lot of ex um, Microsoft employees. Uh, one of them is Omri Agarwal, who worked seven years in Microsoft within different marketing roles and business development. Their chairman has is also a serial, uh, serial entrepreneur, uh, Ahmed Bohanski, I believe is, is his name. Uh, he founded two companies and sold it to uh, one of the biggest publicly listed companies in Israel. Apart from that, you can see they have renowned uh, list of clients ranging from McDonald's to TikTok to eToro, you name it. And these uh, clients tend to have big marketing budgets for the for, for the advertisement and for the apps. And hence you can see why the revenue stream could be recurring because these corporate, if they see the ROI, they, they would be sticky. One of the uh, potential catalysts uh, for this company could be the new SaaS product. 
So before that, they used to provide a platform for all of these corporates, and these corporates would basically assign a, a marketing budget uh, to basically acquire acquire new users. Now they are trying to target small to medium sized uh, companies as well through basically making a SaaS product. So they uh, what they're offering is is is, is a is a platform where these users can basically within within one platform have access to 600 media sources through which they can do uh, user acquisition. And I think this could be a game changer for this company if the product is successful. I believe they're slightly late to this, uh, uh, late to this offering, but it's something which can disrupt, uh, uh, disrupt traditional ad agencies in my opinion. So having a single platform, uh, which they already had, but having a single platform uh, for and cutting the middleman because this a platform would be self-serving for user acquisition uh, could be uh, could basically bring them a lot of stable revenue uh, since since uh, SaaS fees uh, will give more stability rather than let's say uh, when a particular corporates assign a certain budget for the uh, advertisement and let's say we saw in COVID that during COVID some of the big corporates decreased the advertisement budget and we also saw that on the uh, top line as well as bottom line being affected. So going forward, this will increase the stability of the business and if the product is a hit can also enhance the uh, value proposition of this company. Another thing I like about this company, it's, it's trading at a, uh, not I'll say discount, but it's trading quite cheaply uh, against uh, all the competitors and with it like and in comparison to the average of the ad tech sector. And they're also rapidly uh, expanding internationally and taking advantage of the fact that digital advertisement does not have to be localized. So so they have a global team. I believe that uh, they can speak more than 100 languages. Uh, so that's a that's a that's a that's a good sign for this company going forward. So, so now we will uh, highlight and touch upon their weaknesses. I believe one of the biggest weaknesses is the value proposition. Uh, it isn't that unique in my in my opinion. You already have a greedy ads that has basically uh, kind of jumped in before them in the queue in terms of having a self-serving SaaS platform, and even before that, having a platform and doing user acquisition uh, was something which which was done by agencies normally. So I don't see their value proposition being that unique that they will be able to establish a mood around their business. Uh, that being said, they have also failed to deliver and execute post IPO. So as you can see from the numbers over here, in 2018 when they were doing IPO, they predicted a 55 million revenue and they showed that they, they'll become a bit positive. But but they didn't. Uh, in fact, their 2019 revenue was lower than 2018 revenue. And in fact, uh, some of the clients left and the revenue got a hit. So one of the reasons of why the valuation, as I mentioned earlier, was cheap is because they failed to execute. So the execution part can also be seen from their quarter to quarter revenue. So they did an IPO uh, over here, third quarter 2018, sorry, uh, uh, fourth quarter 2018. Then you can see the revenue is declining, 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 kind of breaks even to the 2018 level in, at the end of 2019. And then because of COVID, it started to decline again. So if you promise 50 million but deliver 25 million, companies are not going to like you. Also, if you can see the gross margin hasn't improved, it has actually stayed steady or declined uh, over time. And that also shows to us that the value proposition of their user acquisition isn't as unique as they claim. And that's why you have a lower gross margin than your competitors, as well as your gross margin not increasing over time. Uh, that being said, uh, they, they kind of said that their number of customers have increased from 2018 to 2019, which is a good thing. But that number of customers increasing hasn't translated into the increase in revenue. That shows to me the existing clients are decreasing the revenue they're allocating to their uh, user acquisition platform. So for me, that also means that product ha doesn't have uh, such a great value proposition. So if you can see uh, the Kager revenue growth of one of the competitors, it was before 2020, uh, it was actually growing 200, 300%, and now it's still in the positive despite COVID. Whereas over the period of 2019 to 2020, uh, their revenue growth uh, quarter to quarter has also been on the decline. So you can see the minus number here, and some of the competitors doing really well with the positive double digit uh, uh, revenue growth. And and similar with the gross profit margin, equity ads, which 
by the way, slightly different, they operate in direct advertisement, were able to uh, generate higher gross profit margin, and they have also um, launched a new uh, new self-serving platform just like the SaaS product, but their gross profit margins are higher. So you can see the value proposition of uh, this company isn't as unique. And this is also reflected in the prices. So after, after COVID, um, basically equity ads has been a multi-bagger, but Zoom D has been trading lower or at a similar price when it was IPO'd. Now, now let's talk about the opportunity. Uh, so I did highlight some of the weaknesses, but I also showed one of the price graph where if you execute, uh, you do see a huge price jump and price appreciation in case of equity ads holding debt. So in my op um, in, in, in my view, there could be a huge opportunity if they do deliver, and that is something that uh, that the investor needs to uh, kind of monitor. So even if you see in this charts, uh, Trade Desk, uh, MGNI, uh, and even Equity Ads has has a like for, like double digit uh, price to sales, whereas uh, Zoom D trades about 1.8 five to two price to sales. Now this highlights the fact that what they uh, promised they didn't deliver and all of the other companies to a certain degree did. Uh, so yeah, so the uh, evaluation expansion is huge. One of the other uh, uh, case studies of Citro, uh, so Cit uh, Critio is basically uh, also a user acquisition uh, company which uh, operates in e-commerce. They also have a very low price to sales just because their revenues are decreasing and they fail to deliver what they promise. So, so the valuation catch up can be high if they do uh, kind of um, deliver. Another thing is self-serve platform, even though it doesn't have that much of a value proposition, but it could eat the market shares of ad agencies and cut the middleman because uh, big corporates can then allocate the advertisement budget, user acquisition budget themselves. And that kind of makes sense for them, especially given the rise of different social media and, and kind of, you know, taking advantage of different time frames and things like that. So they can, they can kind of capture that post COVID, uh, advertisement demand will also increase and things will get better. So that is also an additional tailwind for this company. And the firm is also improving as investor relation. I believe they have signed a contract with a new investment relationship committee uh, to, to basically make them more on the radar and improve their communication with the shareholders. Uh, so all of this for me, it's opportunity, a catalyst that can push the price higher in the future if they execute. Now, what are the threats? Um, the biggest issue, I think, the sales revenue fall down. And one other things the investor didn't like was the third party cookies going away. And I highlighted to you earlier that uh, cookies are very important for this company. Because of that, they're able to analyze the user intent, not on the website, but externally as well, and hence uh, give the user prompts of different app, app advertisement. So if the third party uh, cookies goes away, as Google is claiming that on their browser, they, they will get rid of it by 2022, I can see it um, it harming uh, uh, Zoom D to, to a very large extent. And I think prices are kind of uh, showing that. But, but on the other hand, uh, they already have on-site uh, user access. So for that, and they're also compliant with different regulation in Europe and as well as in America. So to, to a certain degree, it will harm them, but not to a uh, very large degree because they'll still have the on-site uh, user information through their AI and natural language processing uh, softwares. And it's also being reflected in their price, uh, price to be fair, uh, the third party cookies going away. Uh, another thing is that they have no boot. Equity ads have uh, launched Illumin and, and, and other startups can also start of give away self-serve. So the first mover advantage in this uh, market will also not kind of establish a mood or give you economies of scale. And, 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 and you can't take advantage of the network effect because other people will kind of come up. So for that, they will need to have a very unique value proposition, which I don't think they have, but obviously they can improve and deliver in the future. So for us, uh, this company looked very interesting in terms of the valuation catch up play, but at the moment it's a hold. We will monitor the company's execution and management's guidance carefully. We don't want, we won't focus on management's guidance that much, but we want to see revenue growth and gross margin increasing. 
I, I think if they do deliver on that, the valuation catch up, let's say, in comparison to equity ads is huge. It's 10 to 15 bagger. And if we do after one or two quarters, if we kind of see consistent growth for us, this company will become a buy. But at the moment, it's, it's a hold. Uh, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time.